Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you're here today and you should be too. Because today we are going to use the $30 flat lap intarsia machine to make an intarsia cabochon. Yep, I'm going to show you how well this works and how easy it really is. Well, it's not easy, but it's not complicated. And you can do it. I know you can, because I have faith in you. You can be the best version of you and this will help. So, so what I did was pick out three pieces of stone from my scrap stone pile. Okay, and what we got is two pieces of claytonite. That's what I'm sort of calling it anymore. Thanks to a friend who put that in my ear. And now I can't get it out of my head. Two pieces of that and this piece of um, gabbro granite marbly stuff that I have laying about. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and put the two pieces of this together this way and put this on the bottom and make ourselves a nice little cabochon. Hmm, seems simple enough, huh? Yep, and it will be. Okay, now I have my really, really high-tech table here. You can see it's not exactly perfectly square to everything, but that's not super important because we're doing this hand powered we can adjust and let me move this more to the center of the screen yeah that, that's good enough okay what we need what well what we need is a spray bottle and the idea is this is going to be the bottom piece these two pieces are going to go together like so and this piece is going to be at the bottom so let's set this piece to the side and we'll start with this piece. It doesn't matter that one's a little bit thicker than the other. Who cares? You know, we're making a we're making a cab out of this. So the first thing we're going to do is we want this side to be flat. Because we're going to put... Where did I put the other piece? How could I lose a piece within three seconds? Ah, okay. A piece was stuck under... Rolled underneath the do-wangy there. Tray. Yeah, we're just calling out the do-wangy today. So these two pieces are going to go together like this. And I've got a big gnarlification on here. As you can see, if it would focus. Where is the focus today? There. Okay, we get a big gnarlification on there. And we can take that off. This is pretty soft material, so we can take that off with this without any really any problem so actually instead of flattening this side first which i'm going to set down here so we don't lose it actually i'm going to set it there so you can see that whenever i can't find it and you can say, point to it and say hey idiot it's over there first i'm going to wet this wheel down with the spray bottle of destiny okay and hopefully this isn't too loud so i'm just going to start by gently taking that off Okay, as you can see, it's not in focus. Come on, focus. Focus! It's going to be a pain in my butt today, I can see. that's This material is pretty soft, so it's working away pretty easy already. And so I'm trying to use as much of the wheel as possible by dragging it back and forth. And I'm just turning this at a nice little convenient convenient speed and what's really nice about this is you can tell whenever you start getting down to being smooth because you can feel how much the wheel is grabbing okay I'm gonna re-wet this we're not throwing the water off but we're still lubricating it as we go And I'm swirling that around, basically. So I'm turning it, you know. I am turning it. And you can see there's two little lines appearing that disappeared when I stopped. Two little lines of stuff. You can see where it's actually grinding at, grinding on it more. You know, I'm not a lot, yeah, I'm not applying a lot of pressure here. 
And you can see we're getting down to a semi-flat surface. All right, so let's take and wipe this off and take a look at the surface. All right? Oh, you can't really tell if it's flat or not. But here's how you do. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take your pencil of destiny and scrapey scrapey all over the stone. Okay, you can see they got the graphite all over the place. Wet this down. Put this back on. And start working that face again. I'm just going to do this for a few moments and then show you show you how far it's getting down and whether you can tell if that's all flat or not. I'd like to do this in real time without having to do a lot of cutaway so you can see that it is not a horribly long process. Okay. You can see there's still there's still water on there so you're not losing lubrication. All right, maybe it'll help if I zoom. Okay, I'm hoping that shows up. You can see the pencil lines are almost all gone. There's a little bit of pencil line right there a little tiny bit right here let me dry it off there you can see it better okay we got some pencil line right there pencil line right there and the cracks show up and focus is not focusing ah we got some pencil line right there pencil line right there and i'm going to redo the pencil line Now, actually, this end is not going to matter too much because this is a thicker end. We're going to cut this off, you know, because our capuchon is going to fall into the water. <sighs> Focus. Let's try that again, you know, because our cabochon is going to be this way. And it's probably not going to be too much longer than than this anyway. So this far end is not going to be of too much consequences if it is not completely flat. So we've got this remarked, respray, and you could put a drip system on here, which would probably be good. You'd be turning it on and off quite a bit because you wouldn't want to be dripping while you're marking and looking. Okay, and you can really get this going fast. Like, here you go, see? It's getting so fast that I can't even catch up, keep up with it. Now, I would say we are probably pretty well flat all over. Now, let's zoom, zoom, and dry that off. Okay, as you can see, there is no pencil mark there anymore. Got something right there, though. Right there. And I believe that is... I mean, we could cut that away. Make sure we got, make sure we got it in the, in the camera so you can see. I'm going to put some extra doodah stuff on there spray 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 and we'll give that a quickie as you can you can you can actually feel in the stone how much that's grabbing just like if you're doing stones by hand with sandpaper on a cushion with the dot stick on it you know you can feel pretty much when all the facets or out of the stone. All right, so let's wipe this off. Dry it quickly. Zoom in and focus. And yes, you've got a flat surface, except for right there. 
So I'm going to I'm going to call that done. So we're going to decide that yeah, this is not going to be on our stone. I could take this over and cut it off. You know, actually I think I might do that. I'm going to take this over to the saw and I'm going to zip that off right there. So don't go away. Okay, we are back from the saw. And this is our edge that we are going to use. I'll dry it off a little bit. Wait, which edge was it we were going to use? This side. Yeah, this is the side we're going to use. Okay, this is the side we're going to use. All right, we really don't have to do anything else to it yet. This is our bottom, this is our side. What I am going to do is take a Sharpie and mark the side that we are not going to use. So I don't have confusion again. So there we have. So that is our good side, and it is flat and focused. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is take this stone. All right, this is the one we are going to put together like this. Actually, we're going to put it together like this. Yes. So this is our good side. All right. So I'm going to set this stone right there. And this is the side that we are going to work on next. And I am going to... It seems pretty flat. I may have cut either cut this with a saw or a dog, maybe worked this over with the flat lap earlier. And we are going to flatten this side up. Okay. And again, like I'm, I'm going to try to do this in real time and keep you entertained while I'm grinding it. And you can feel as this grinds away how far you're actually getting with it. And it's kind of amazing. It's something that you have to experience, experience to understand. You know, and the stone's not heating up because it's not going super fast, but it's going fast enough to cut nicely, especially with these soft stones. Okay, so let's take this now, zoomy zoom, and take a look. Let me dry it off. Ooh, I'm getting lightheaded. Okay. All right, that's actually pretty darn good. You can see there... There is no, no pencil mark on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with the pencil one more time. Just to be certain about that. Okay. Spray, 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 spray. Unzoom. Put this on here and give it a couple swirly swirls around. And we should, actually by now, we should know if this is flat. Dry. Ooh. Okay. Yes, we are good. And as you notice, we have a big gnarlification right here. And I think I'm going to take that off now. I bump the camera again. I should just take it over to the wheel and do it on the wheel to save these flat laps. And since this is a pretty soft stone, it's not going to be a big issue. As you can see, that's... I think you can see that that's getting pretty much off of there. It doesn't really matter that it's one there. We could just work right around that. It also give you an idea of how little effort it takes to do this. Okay, and you see there's a big gnarly in here. Focus. There's sort of a big gnarly in there. 
could take this down to where that gnarly's away. Which I think I might do that. But I'm going to do that on the wheel because I don't want to put that much pressure on this wheel. Because, because why not? I mean, that's just something you could take away on the big wheel without any, any issues whatsoever. Instead of using this. So, let's do that. Hold on. Don't go away. Okay. Back. That took literally 45 seconds to take that out. And I don't even know if I'm going to bother. Yeah, I might straighten that out a little bit on the wheel. But you can see that gnarly is gone now. So, I'm going to hit this really fast. Just to flatten this bottom out. Because the wheel is curved and I might have had a little bit of curvature on there. This is not going to be a big issue if it isn't isn't flat. But yeah, just take a few seconds like that. And look what we got. Now we got pretty much flat surface and this surface is flattened. I am going to just do another really quick check. With the pencil just because I don't want to have any gaps here. In case I put some scratches, not scratches, but some maybe some chips in the bottom. Or in the side when I took the bottom across the wheel. So let's take a quick look. Okay, dry it off. Okay, no pencil marks. Alright, where's our other piece? Here it is. Alrighty, and I am going to mark the side that we are not going to use with the marker. Okay, and see what we have here? We have something very out of focus. There it is. That is going together pretty darn flatly. And look at that. There is... There is no... Focus! There's no real discernible gap in there. And for our purposes, that is pretty darn good. Oop, wrong direction. Alright, so then when we put our other pieces, we're going to have these. This rather dark cabochon of cabochonness. You know what? I don't... I don't know if I... Hold on a second. Here. Got this piece of marble. Why don't we put that in there, in between those two. And then that'll give us this. Yeah, I think that'll be better. And why put it in there? Because we can. So, all that's going to entail is we need to have two flat sides. So, how do we do that? We take and pencil mark this side. That's simple. Put it against the hooflangy wheel of destiny. Ooh, I can feel a little bit of gnarliness going there. It's catching. One thing about making... And Tarsha work. I've been messing around with this for the last three weeks. And it's like, man, this is fun. <clears throat> One thing about the Intarsha work, you can do whatever you want to. Let's dry that off. And it looks like there are no pencil marks on that surface. And I always like to double check it. Just, just because. Just because it only takes a second. Oh, that's not a bad shot. Yeah. Because it only takes a second to double check. And why not double check? Okay, dried off. 
That doesn't want to dry. Yep, no pencil marks. So we have ourselves a flat surface. Now we have to do the same thing to this side. Now, you know what? I'm going to move this. Oh, no. I'm going to move it. There's... Yeah, 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 you can see there. I'm going to wet that wheel down. Put the old pencil marks on there. Try to get some focus going. And we're going to do this side, too. I don't mind changing plans in the middle of the stream sometimes when something else strikes me. And why do I do it? Because I can. Turned a three-piece intarsia into a four-piece intarsia. Because we can. Kidoki. Now. Okay, there we go. Clean it off, wipe it off, dry it off. Wow, I need a hairdryer. I'm getting dizzy. Okay, it seems like all the pencil marks are gone. And I'm going to do my OCD double check just because. Spray that down. And you can hear it, it's not loud at all. I mean, the only motor is your muscles. And the smoother you get the stone, the less noise it makes as you go. Oh, okay, dry. Okay, it looks like we've got ourselves a nice flat surface. So, yeah, that's the way we want to go. So this is going to go flat against here. I think we want to zoom in anyway. It looks pretty darn, darn flat. And this against here, which looks pretty darn flat. And that looks pretty darn good. So the next thing to do is we're going to glue these three pieces together. And the middle section here seems pretty flat. So we can glue them that way with these ends pretty much that way. And then we'll come up with this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is pull out my highly technical and advanced portable table. Yep, that's it. And the super glue. And I'm going to sit down for this. <laughs> right, now, what you do want to do is get yourself a a clean cloth because you got dust and garbage and oil from your fingers and who knows what else all over these stones so I'm gonna put some denatured alcohol in here and I'm gonna put the side that we're going to glue down into it and this one's gonna be on both sides all right so I'm going to let the denatured alcohol sort of soak in there for a little bit. And if you get it onto the side that has the marker, it's going to it's gonna take the marker off. And I'm going to wipe that clean. Hey, okay, I'm going to place that upwards like that. Clean this off. I'm hoping that's in focus because I cannot see the screen real well. Wipe that dry. Ta-da. And this side has both. See, I'm getting marker on my fingers. Jeez. This side is, this one is both sides. I'm just going to try and touch it as little as possible. Get them nice and clean. I've seen that some people don't bother with this. But there's no reason not to have nice, clean glue surfaces. Okay, and you want them to be dry. Now, I've actually been taking a hairdryer... And drying these off 
because actually the glue seems to work better or sets a little bit quicker when the hair dryer is when the stones are warm so i'm going to dry these off real quick and and we're going to glue them together so hair dryer away this is probably going to be loud but i plug in yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I had the thing plugged in right, but I was hitting the wrong button. Oh, boy. Okay, stones are nice and dry. So now we are going to glue these together. Let's start with these two. So I got here super glue gel. And I'm going to start with this middle one. I'm going to put super glue. Hopefully we can see everything that's going on here. Okay, I'm gonna put super glue on there. And uh, smooshy wishy against that stone. Okay, and that's about where we want it to be, right there. And then I'm gonna put it on this one. I mean if yeah, if you you could just put these two together and then put the next one on it. But if you work fast enough, you can do all three without any issue. Okay, and the bottoms of these are semi-flat, so I have this surface here, and I'm adjusting them, I'm pushing them together, All right, and you can see there is a little bit of movement between the two stones, three stones, ah. and we've got pretty much what we want, so now I'm going to, and I don't really know if you need to actually do this. But I'm going to clamp it. And there we go. What in the world? That's not right. Okay. Oh. There we go. Okay. I can see that there is a problem already. These two are not going together properly. There was a gap. I could actually see the gap. Looks like there might have been a piece of something stuck in there. And I rolled it out. Okay. So now back together. Yes, that is much better. And if something goes wrong, hey, we'll see what goes wrong and we'll figure out how to fix it. So now we're going to have to give this about, oh, I'm going to give it about a half an hour. Okay, so it's going to be half hour for me and about five seconds for you. So don't go out and have a cup of coffee or anything because it's only going to be a second or two. So I'll be back. Okay? Okay, it's been a half an hour and one piece of pizza later. So let's see what we have here. And what we should have here is a pretty well yeah the glue's all dry because my finger is not sticking to it we have a fairly well glued piece of composite material now woohoo so the next thing we do is we attach this focus we attach this to this and to do so we're gonna have to flatten this side and flatten this up. So, let's remove our highly advanced table here. And I want to have as close to a 90 degree angle as I can get on here using this here table. So, we are going to spray this. And I should have mentioned Whenever you're done, if you're going to go away for a few minutes, I suggest spraying this down and even wiping wiping it a little bit because that dust, the muck particles, do tend to stick in there. And it's not really a big issue, but you don't want sticky, mucky stuff in your, in your wheel. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here like so. And I'm going to... Oh! 
I got the alcohol in the way. Okay, so I'm going to start by gently pressing this down onto the table and against the wheel. And you can see it's not, ex it, it's a little bit wobbly, but it's not horribly wobbly. And it's not wobbly enough that it's going to make a difference. Okay, and I'm going the whole way across the wheel, and I can actually go on to where it comes upwards or downwards. If you push it on this side, in the rotation side, then it's going to hold it flatter against your table, just like a, a disc sander would. And I'm not pressing very hard, because, you know, we got a lot of unevenness here. And probably the 80 grit wheel would probably do better for this. Let's just take a quick look and see what we have so far. Okay, and as you can see, there is a big gnarly divot right in there. And I should have taken that out before I glued this together. Yes, I should have. But learn. That's when you, you make mistakes, you learn. So that's a lot of grinding. So I think I'm going to take this over onto the big wheel and take this down to that point before I before I flatten this surface out. Okay? So don't go away. That's only going to be a few seconds. Alrighty. So as I ground that off, I noticed that, guess what? I'm not 90 degrees. And you know what? We're going to leave it that way. We're going to flatten that up and we're going to leave it at about 89 or 87 degree angle because, well, because why not? Because we can. So there's two reasons. We can and why not? So what we're going to do is wet down our wheel and we're going to hold that flat. And as you can see, See, maybe it's a little bit rounded so we are going to have to make sure that we are flat and we're going to be at that slight angle but that's why we have this 90 degree table on here to give us a 90 degree angle to the bottom and like I said I'm going to do this in real time so you can see how this how this works. Yeah, and you can hopefully see. I think we're getting too many shadows here for you to see properly, which stinks. Okay, zoom, zoom in. You can see that this bottom cuts away this direction. Woo! And you got this nice polished bit, and then we're getting down here. So this is angling up this way. So we just got a little bit more work to do on that. And once we get, well, maybe that'll look better if we, yeah, I think that might do. You know, I can actually move this. Yes, that will be a lot better. Hey, we can do, we can do it here, you know. And you still can't see because of the shadows. No, I think you can see enough. Okay, we are slowly getting that down to where we need to be. And it's just suddenly is eased up, so now we're getting... To where we need to be. He, like I said, the tactile input on this is really great because you can feel when you are getting getting uh, getting down to where you need to be. I'm gonna pick up the speed a little bit. It will take a little bit longer here because we are grinding through a much bigger piece. 
Maybe bring it over this way. Oh, maybe you can see better this direction. Okay. The only thing about this side is you've got to uh, hold it down firmer onto the 90 degree table. Alrighty, I feel as if we've gotten just about to where we need to be. So dry this off. Alright. Okay, as you can see that that's coming along pretty good. Now we're going to check it. Cover that with our pencil. With the pencil marks of destiny. You can't even hear any clicking going across that as you're rubbing the pencil. The pencil lines on. Let me get this back down to, to there. Hopefully, yeah, I think maybe you can see better. The lights shine down on the screen, and it makes it difficult for me to even see if you can see what you can see. Okay. And the drying off. Alrighty, it appears that we are out of focus, but we are also flat. Yes, we are flat. We are at a slight angle, but we are flat. And what we need is flat. That is what's important. This will really have to be dried off. Alrighty, so we have established that this side is flat. Now we have to decide which side of this we're going to put against there. And I think we're just going to go with this side. So I'm going to take my Sharpie marker of destiny and mark the other side that we are not going to use. So that I can get the blue stuff on my fingers. Spray this down, and we're going to flatten this entire side. Flatten, 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 flatten. This is spinning really free, so that means that this side is probably pretty flat to start with. This may have been a piece I had been working on on another project. That could be why it's so easy to, to spin. Ouch, that was my knuckle. Flatten, flatten, no, let's dry this off. Focus it. And pencil check it. Okay, we got pencil lines on there. I want the pencil lines much farther down to the edge just to be sure spray and here we go now on this one i am going to make sure that i get it in the camera and that i flatten the bottom up a little bit that's really spinning free so that is a good sign that we are nice and flat Okay, dry off. <laughs> all right, I am not seeing any pencil marks on there at all. So it's going to go against there. So we're going to call this the bottom. So just for hee <laughs> hee and the ho hos, I'm going to take and flatten this up just in case there's no, not, just so there isn't any tiny gnarlies on there. This is not super 
important at the moment that we do that, that it's done super flat. So I'm just going to run it till it feels well. Dry that off, and now we have a flat side to put on the table, flat side to glue. And that's what we're going to do next. But actually, what we're going to do is clean this off with alcohol. Not get any alcohol in there. Yes. Actually, what we're going to do is clean this off with alcohol, and then I'm going to flatten the bottom of the bigger piece out a little bit. Okay, that should be nice and dry. We'll let that dry over here. And this piece, I'm going to flatten this bottom out just a bit. Okay, so this could be kind of gnarly. This isn't absolutely necessary that you flatten the bottom out already. So if I sort of flatten it out, and then when we glue the other piece to it, what you're going to get is a little bit more... Well, you'll have a little less to flatten out when you flatten the entire finished piece out. Okay, there's some grabbiness there. As you can see, there's some glue still there. Yeah, and we got a little bit of space here. Hopefully that's not going to carry up through. It's probably why we're getting some wetness up along this edge. Now we're just going to leave it at that. And we're also going to clean off the gluing edge. And I use alcohol because it's not going to dissolve the, the super glue. But I am going to heat it up a little bit. Just because we got some leaching of liquids going up through there, and that's not going to be good for the uh, adhesion. All right, so get this alcohol out here. Bring back the portable table of destiny, and I'll be right back. I'm just going to dry these off with the hair dryer, and then we will continue. Okay. Alrighty. Now I just realized that. When I glue this on here, I'm going to have a terrible time trying to clamp that to that end because we got uneven gnarlies here. You know, and the thing we don't want is uneven gnarly. So I'm going to go and slice this off with the saw and give us a fairly square end. All right, so don't go away. Alrighty, I have taken, I've heated these up with the hairdryer, cleaned this off, and everything is ready to go. So this is going to be put, put bleh, bleh, bleh. this is going to be put on to this. So I'm going to put some super glue on here. Super glue gel, super glue gel. And this is how our stone is going to go. And there it is. Push that against there, squish it around a little bit so we got super glue everywhere. Now oh, shift it a little bit. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. Yes, it is going to be much of an issue. Got to watch how your clamps go. Okay, there we go. So we've got this glued to that, and that glued to that like that. And now, oh, another half hour, but I'm not getting another piece of pizza. So don't go away. Okay, oh, just knock it off. Why don't I? Everything seems to be dry, and I almost went for that second piece of pizza, but 
Nah, I didn't. All right, so this is what we have now. Yeah, it's a little high here, but all we need, you know, is this thickness here to make a decent cab. Everything seems to be... That glue's all wet and out of focus. Okay, I thought that glue was... Oh, good grief. Huh, okay, it's been a bit later and one ice cream sandwich. And yes, now this glue is dried. And it probably was dry enough, but there was just a lot of it up here. And if I would get it in the camera, it would be so much better. So now we have our super rough ready to be ready to be shaped and cut. So what I'm going to do is take it over to the saw and I'm going to cut this off here. And I think I'm going to trim this top down a little bit so we can get a better look at exactly what this piece of intarsia looks like. Alrighty, so don't go away. All right, I am back. And as you can see, I cleaned that up. Probably, you know, I cleaned it up pretty good. I didn't do the bottom because we're going to do that on here, but I cleaned up the sides and the top so we can get a better look at how these seams came out. And you can see this is the top. That's not, that's not bad at all. I mean, it's a little, well, it's gnarly because it's still rough. But the seams seem to be pretty good, even on the bottom. Now, cutting across the top, I, I mean, we can zoom in a little bit more. May have a little bit of something going on here. But even scrape my fingernail across it, I really can't feel it. So let's remove this table here. And see, I didn't clean the wheel off again, like I was told you to. I'm just going to flatten this bottom out. Okay. I'm flatten this out before we even make our cabochon out of there. And you can sort of see this one's higher. This piece is out of focus. But this is higher, so I'm going to put more pressure on this side to get that down quicker. Because, you know, you put a little pressure this way, you're going to get that down to where you can start getting the whole thing. Instead of having equal pressure from high point to high point, and then in the middle it's going to going to wear off these high points and you just want to wear off the high point on the one side first. <laughs> now, even on this fairly big hunk, this is working down pretty pretty quickly. I mean there's still a decent amount to get get flattened out. But it is not a terrible long process. It would be better if it was in focus, too. Sorry about that. I was watching the stone more than I was watching the... Uh, watching the camera. So let's take a look. Focus. Okay, I can't you know, feel anything there with my fingers. We could give it the old pencil test. And I think we will, because why not? Because if you're going to have this stone set into something, you know, your uh, jeweler will thank you for it. Maybe I'll leave that zoomed in. I think I will. And wow, yeah, it just suddenly just got really easy to crank. That means we are probably flat. Blow on it, dry it off, come on. <sighs> yes, now the bottom is pretty darn flat. 
All right. Now, from this point, basically, you have your your cabochon ready to be done. I mean, your pieces and tarsha together. You got little angly dangly. You got one, two. Well, these two stones are the same. This is different, and this is different. And we are we are ready to do the cabochon. And we have a nice flat bottom. And, you know, we could get our templates out. Get our templates and pick out a nice focused shape. Maybe something like that. And that's going to give us a nice looking cabochon. So that is how... Oh, here's even a fat one. Maybe a fatter one. You know, and then that white vein in there coming out, that just adds extra oomph to it. Yeah, there's the bottom. So that is how, well, that's how and how good this hand crank $30 cabin, cabbing or flat lap intarsia machine actually works. You know, I, I really don't think... See, I'm cleaning all that gook off of there. For the amount of money that it takes to build this, especially... I mean, even if you don't have any of the parts lying around, except for some 2 before I mean, you, you can't go wrong making it like this. But this video is long enough. I don't think I'm going to actually cut this cab today for this, for this video. But that's how we put it together. So, and I'll do another video actually doing this piece of intarsia preform into the cabochon. Because I do want to let the glue set for a little bit, a little bit longer before I go torquing the heck out of it on the machines, you know, for an extended period of time. So, that's how she works, and that's how you do it. So, thanks for spending some time with me, and have a good evening. Whoop, wait, wrong hand. Have a good evening.